Every so often, the Sports Hangover touches on mature topics. Discretion is advised. Welcome to the Sports Hangover. I'm Michael Benatar. Alongside the great and wonderful Jeremy Garrison. Ta-da! I made it. You're here, Jeremy. Uh, today we're going to cover I'm a few stories. Here. We're going to do a uh, little Scandal City. Titus Young was arrested yesterday. He was arrested twice within 15 hours. And currently he is on the Lions calendar. And uh, a star, I guess. Or up and coming star. Lions receiver. Which... I thought he, the Lions cut him, Mike. The what? I thought the Lions cut Titus Young a while ago. That's what I was told today by a Lions fan at work. Oh, maybe I should do a little uh, research before I read these stories. Research is always good. Was As he you really do cut? Research, I just want to explain what happened. Okay. So he got a DUI this weekend, which is normal. Yeah. Well, it happens to the best of us. Not us, but others. Yeah, other people. And he got so he got arrested once, and his car was impounded. And so he went home, and he just – he's so out of, out of it. He jumped the fence in the impound lot yep. and went to retrieve his car – that's not going to work nine times out of ten, and he got arrested again. <laughs> that's what happened. That's it. Twice in fifteen hours. I mean, the guy wanted his car, and I could understand if you're a little drunk, that might sound like a good idea. I I imagine our friend Tony, which do- he doesn't listen to the show, could try this if this ever happened to him. Be careful, because he does listen to the show, and he told me that, and he told me <laughs> <laughs> that he listens. So I can't badmouth him anymore. No, he doesn't listen. I, I've asked him. I don't think Titus Young is on the Lions anymore, because he's fucked up so many times, Mike, in recent memory. He's only been on the Lions two, maybe three years, and since he was drafted at Boise State, he's been a fuck-up time after time. He was just a high draft pick in fantasy football in a lot of places this year. He contributed absolutely nothing. And this is – I mean, we talk about this all the time. This happened last year with many other – Guys, then during the off season, they got drunk, they got rowdy, they got arrested. But to me, it doesn't make sense. I always say it's like you have all this money. Why are you going out, getting shit faced, and driving your car, and then going to try to jump over the impound lot and get your car? It does, yeah, like, why is he jumping? Why can't someone else jump for him? You know, I'm That's- not, I'm not a millionaire, and I take uh, taxi cabs to the bar so I can get really drunk. I'm a smart drunk. Well, you take a form of taxi, a yeah. new pink mustache service yeah, if in you the got, Los Angeles now, area. Not a sponsor at all, but Lyft. They could be easy. L-Y-F-T. Easily. A great car service. It's people like you and me that drive cars around. It's it's great. I've, Is it only in L.A. or other cities? It's in, it's in big, big cities. I think it's popping up all over. But if it's in your city, I suggest taking it. And uh, So next time Titus Young wants to go out, we'll call one for him. Yeah, but TSH I'll, will spot the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But tweet us. So uh, I can get five dollars uh, credit. I just so I can drive around for free. I mean, if you're gonna sign up because of me, tweet I me. You tweet us with your, your sports thoughts, not your all right taxi cab thoughts. So here's another fuck up. Uh, now, Jeremy, I'm always pushing the secondary football leagues, USFL, Arena Football. Now, Arena Football might not be on the top of my list, but the there's a new owner of the Chicago Arena Football team, and uh, I guess he's a bankrupt, convicted felon. Uh, this, this is no, I don't even care about the story, but basically this is going to hurt all these up and coming uh, leagues, I guess, because there's people like this that can kind of have a front and pretend to be somebody they really aren't and take control of a team. Cause as long as you look legit and papers are going through and signing things, I mean, this is what could happen. And this scares me for the USFL or the A11 Football League, which uh, I've also heard from my source, things are not going well internally for them. They need, oh. they need moolah. Now things are happening. We all need moolah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So Come on, they, Mike. they're 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 not they're not on track right now. And it's, so it may not be happening, or no, they're no, no, just no. delayed. They, they say it's going to happen, but it's it, the guy that I know, the source. Well, I you know he just keeps telling me that things are not looking very good. But it's now, this happen. looks bad for Arena Football League, obviously, because yeah. they have an owner who is a convicted felon. But it just speaks to the league in general. What a crappy league. I mean, we had an issue here in Orlando with the Orlando Predators, the Orlando Arena Football League team last year, where the whole team got fired at Olive Garden. Do you remember that? What? Oh, they no, got rid yeah, of the I whole do. team at the Olive Garden right down the street. <laughs> and they just, goodbye, because they wouldn't pay, play for like $40 a game. Game, yeah. something stupid and they got all these replacement players coming in they actually played a game in front of no people with all these replacement players it's an embarrassment and it just shows how hard it is to compete with the nfl the nfl may be one of the most successful businesses in the united states if not the world it's hard to go up against something like that now jeremy for me if i was going to start a league 
I feel like you shouldn't go after the NFL. You should go after people that like the NFL and maybe change it up a little bit. Now, I'm not saying like college football, I guess, is a relief for some people that like football and want tons of it, you know, two days a week. But for me, I'd almost start small. It's like like Instagram. Instagram just started, uh, you know, a few years ago and it took off and a bigger company bought them for a billion dollars. That's what a company needs to do now with this spring football league. They need to start something that the NFL would want so bad that the NFL slaps their logo on top of it and says... But the NFL doesn't need another league. I mean, their offseason is more popular than any other of these leagues' real season. No, I know I know With that. With the draft but, and free agency and everything else? I'm saying it would just... It would almost be like an added bonus. It's like, we're not really going to do too much with this, but if you'd like to watch some off-season football, here are like our D players that are going to play. And some of these guys might get drafted because they're good enough to play. I, I don't know. I like the idea of like a minor league system for the NFL, an official minor league, because yeah. right now if you're not good enough to make a team, you're nowhere. You're a free agent. That doesn't really seem fair. There should be some kind of feeder system. There is in basketball and hockey and especially baseball. And I think some of the people that, that, that watch college football – would probably watch this because for me, I, I hate college football. I just, I can't watch it. It's not there. It's not a hundred percent of the, the show I want to watch. I want to watch talent play. And I think this might be something they might like. An issue for me there would be the quarterbacks. I feel like there's 20 NFL quarterbacks in the entire world and there it's 32 teams obviously so that's an yeah. issue so yeah. what kind of quarterbacks are you gonna put out there because that's all people care about right now I mean, is good offense and you, good quarterbacks you'd put a tim tebow but i think we've really talked about tim tebow a little too much lately this is a non-tebow show uh another thing we've talked i mean we haven't talked about it a lot but it seems like all the other nba teams and owners are talking about is phil jackson i guess phil jackson just turned down an offer to the brooklyn nets uh he was to be their head coach and to me when i read this story i didn't understand why like as a casual NBA fan, looking at this, having some guy, Phil Jackson, come back after, I don't know, three, four years of not coaching, and maybe in the NBA doing something. I, I don't know what he's doing in the NBA right now, but it doesn't make sense to me to have him come back after he hasn't coached in years. And I understand it could still So you're saying there. it doesn't make sense on Phil Jackson's end? No, it doesn't make sense on the guys that are trying to – like, why the don't you get – Nets. Do you, yeah. you don't think the Nets should try to hire Phil Jackson? No, I mean, it, I guess it's kind of like taking Kobe out of retirement. Like, yeah, he's 42, but he could still play. Let's get him on our team. It's like name recognition. But I'm saying, why does this even – why do you need this? Why can't you just find the next young guy? And I know it's hard to find the next Phil Jackson, but I'm saying, why not go look for him? You can pay a lot less because it seems like every team is offering Phil Jackson their life. Like, anything, anything you want, Phil, I'll give it to you. You want $300 million? It's yours. And that's why your take is so interesting because you're really in the minority on that, which I think is fantastic that you come out and say that. Phil Jackson is the best coach in NBA history. Okay. He is the best. And it's not like he's 85 and on his deathbed. I know, I know. He's 60-something. He can still coach. He's still tweeting up a storm during Lakers games, which is highly entertaining. Just follow him on Twitter. And I think he'd be a great fit for the Nets who need a big-name coach to justify – they're, they're big name franchise. They want to be big time with Jay Z and trying to bring in Darren Williams, and they don't have Dwight quite yet, but they want to be big time. And Phil makes a lot of sense there. Phil doesn't make sense, for example, the Detroit Pistons, who he's consulting for them right now on their new head coach. So he's yeah. just getting some cash to help find somebody. Of course. But my, my whole thought is I know he's the greatest. And it's also Michael Jordan was the greatest, and people wanted him back. People want him to play. But it's not. Why not find the next one? Like, you have to make a statement. So get a young coach in. He could win a title, and then you could say, oh, Jeremy Garrison is one of the best NBA coaches out there. Why don't we hire him? It's like, why don't you be a young commodity instead of an old one that doesn't really make sense? And I understand. Because people won't get excited for a young guy until he wins, and there's uh -huh. a chance he may never win. They would get so excited with before the first game of the year Phil Jackson came in. He'd be the biggest star on the team. He really know, would be. But he would only, what, last a few years? Like, I don't imagine him. Didn't he leave because of medical reasons anyways the first place? So Yeah, and, and they talked about, remember, he was going to get the Lakers job. He should have gotten the Lakers job yes. this year. I mean, he should have. But Mike Dan Tony got it. We all we all knew at the time it was a bad move that they gave it to Dan Tony, yeah. and now we know for sure. But Phil Jackson was trying to negotiate. He might not go to road games and might not fly, and this and that. Too so it would obviously take uh, some extenuating circumstances if he just plop down in New Jersey and only coach the home games. Do you, is that what you really want? I don't know. Uh, I mean, if you want, I know us, you don't. No, I, might. I don't want him there. I mean, I but think about all the coaches the Nets have gone through year after year after year. They can't find anyone. Isn't Phil Jackson a better option? 
option than the next guy on the list? I, yeah, I, I mean, it probably is. But I don't think it's always the coach's problem. Sometimes it's also the players on the team. It could be their problem. Like, I don't, I don't know if Phil Jackson could have turned around the Lakers. I mean, maybe morally they could have been in a better mindset, but I, the team just did not work well together. And I don't know no, if Phil would have helped. No, and that's a podcast for another day because that yeah. thing – Needs to be talked about. <laughs> uh, another bad business moves. Uh, you're Florida Marlins. Or they're just the Marlins now, I guess. I'm wearing Braves at. <laughs> <laughs> you're from you Miami, so about? you're instantly just you're no, Marlins. Clearly, fan. I did well. I went Miami Dolphins, Atlanta Braves. Uh, the Marlins, I guess, are so bad that no businesses want to open nearby. I guess there is prime retail space available, but... No one wants to go in there because no one's going to the games and everybody's losing money in the area. So it's basically just turning to a shithole in a circle. I mean, you've been there, right? Yeah. I mean, whoever wrote prime retail space has never been there. It's in Little Havana, Michael. It, there is a uh, spaceship from outer space plopped down in the middle of Little Havana. That's what this thing is. It's state of the art. It's beautiful. It's a piece of art. It's tremendous. It's in the middle of the Cuban area of Miami. Yeah. There are rundown buildings next to it. I parked at an apartment complex. <laughs> the guy that took my money yeah. right outside the Miami Marlins Stadium, he did not live there. He was just collecting money. We parked. We were the last car in. He took our money. He got on his motorized scooter and left. That's the neighborhood that this place is in. It's not a good area. Not it's not all. prime retail space. So I what, don't know what, the, what they're trying to say. So could they ever sell off this – the stadium again? I mean, it's all publicly ran, basically. I mean, right? It's all tax money that paid yeah, for Yeah, it, it's a beautiful stadium. Something should be played in. I heard a great idea today. I'm really loving this idea. So say you just get rid of the Marlins. Okay. Marlins, you can either go away or get the hell out of here, but you're not staying, right? Okay. That's what they say. So you kick the Marlins out. You move the Dolphins into that stadium. Okay. Because you just throw a few more seats on there. Right now it holds 30,000. Make it hold 60, whatever. Yeah. Build up. Right? Sure. And okay. it's a beautiful stadium already. The Dolphins are playing in there. Then the Dolphins can stay in Miami. We don't want them moving, which they might. And then uh, you can get rid of that crappy stadium they currently play and give that to, like, the city of Miami if they want to sell it or build something there. Everyone wins. So, but I feel like building the baseball stadium makes more sense for baseball because it goes half the year. Right? And the Dolphins only play eight games a year? Yeah. At home. So what – financially doesn't make sense to me, but – who knows? Miami's all fucked up anyways. Miami's what well, aren't the Dolphins owned by like ten different celebrities? Minority owned. Steven Ross is the owner and he's not gonna move them, but he wants to sell a team now that the public isn't gonna fund the stadium. But that's what we talked about our last show. I the know, public should never fund stadiums, in my opinion. So we'll see what happens. I mean, Miami's all messed up, losing teams left and right. Literally spaceship plopped in the middle of Little Havana. Uh another thing that doesn't make sense. All business things. Carrie Underwood is now going to be uh, – she gets the Sunday night football gig, you know, where she sings like, Sunday night football on NBC. Yeah. Um, I don't get it. Every so she's replacing Faith Hill. Faith Hill yes. was a big name. Was she not popular enough to keep around? I mean, she's a name, but I don't know. She doesn't excite me. I mean, I don't really know why. I mean, I get it. It's like kind of a – I don't know. It's just a fun gig to have somebody sing it, but it doesn't make sense to me to have Carrie Underwood do it because it, I don't think it represents our uh, – The football fans. The yeah. football fans, yeah. Everybody in our demographic. I could care less who sings it. Is anyone – no one's watching it for the song, right? No, no one's watching. I mean, Faith Legs, her, uh, Faith, Faith Hill, her legs were very great last year, but uh, I don't know about Carrie – I don't know. To me – Do I they think like – Females will watch the song, and then the males will watch the game. Are they trying to bring in more females, more viewers? I they mean, must be. It's to like, make such a big deal. They had like a big announcement yesterday, like it was some kind of big deal. Well, it's like the Super Bowl, like the like Beyonce played last year. I mean, I watched it, but it wasn't a band. It's not like I listened to Beyonce on repeat during the day, right? So to me, having Carrie Underwood, maybe they're trying to get the female demographic, but but it's not like she's performing a song before I the know. game. She, it's on tape. It's the same freaking song. Well, she changes it. She week. changes it every week. For well, the, the Cowboys trying. She adds like two words every time. I don't get it, and I, I, I really. Who is Carrie Underwood? I mean, she won American Idol. Is she even a celebrity? 
Well, I mean, she's big enough to be on there. I don't know. All I'm saying is they should have somebody like a Little Wayne do it or a bigger band that's more in her demographic. Even like, uh, I don't know, some old bands. I would I'd appreciate an older band singing, not Carrie Underwood or Faith Hill. I don't know. I just don't like you it. Remember on ESPN, the Monday Night Football song, they had um, Hank Williams Jr., the country singer. He was doing it, and then he like said something bad on Fox and & Friends and yeah. got kicked up. Booted. Off ESPN, then they went without the song, and it was just fine. You don't need yeah, a song. No one needs but a song. who am I to rip NBC, right? <laughs> All right. If uh, check out thesportshangover.com, uh, youtube.com backslash thesportshangover. Tons and tons of shows coming out all the time. Um, Plus, as the NBA playoffs go, we're going to keep up with that. Is LeBron going to win the championship? Is Derek Rose going to come back for the Bulls? We're on top of it. We're going to follow the NHL playoffs. I've been watching it. I have it on my a screen right to my left right here watching uh, Pittsburgh play the Capitals. I don't think we're going to follow that. Oh, Penguins fans. Not, on... No, Pittsburgh playing. Uh, I don't even know who they're playing. The Islanders. The, Islanders, they're yeah. playing. the Penguins are on thin ice here. Oh, oh zing, zing, zing. Ah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right, if we're going to go blessed at a rest of the We'll see you next time. Yes.